Hello my friends, a few words about the extraordinary island of Java. And although Java is really the heart of the archipelago of Indonesia, and 52% of the Indonesian population, which is about 155 million people of the total population of some 280 million people, are Javanese, most of them living in Java, a lot of people tend to forget it. It is the most densely populated region on the globe, up to 1,500 people per square kilometer. And yet many parts of Java are still green and unpopulated and sweep up the sides of these massive mountains. For there are at least 53 active volcanoes in Java. And it's those that make it the fertile island Great Asian civilizations such as the Silendras in the 700s and of course the Majapahit Empire all the way up until the early 1500s which is about when incoming Islam from the West pushed the great Hindu Balinese or rather I should say Hindu Buddhist kingdoms of both Sumatra and Java eastwards into Madura Island and into Bali. They have left this a staggering reflection of high art, not only high culture, but a quality of workmanship found in the carvings and in the music and in the dance that is still resonant and dominant throughout much of Indonesia. Now, a lot of people forget that only 13,000 years ago, the last ice age drew the waters up into the frozen north and south poles. So the sea level was much lower and you could actually walk from mainland Asia down to Sumatra, across to Java, all the way over to Borneo. But then you encountered just east of Bali and just east of Borneo, the incredibly deep tectonic trench that divides two tectonic plates. You could walk no further. But every 14 to 15,000 years, this ice age uh, operates like a pulse. So you could walk all the way from mainland Asia to the very edge of this great landmass where all the volcanoes were, which are now Java. Why were they there? Because the Australasian tectonic plate subducted, went beneath the Sunda plate. And as it dived down towards the heat at the center of the earth, it melted and came bubbling up to the surface as volcanoes. And as for international awareness of the island of Java, the first thing one heard about as a child were Javanese dancing girls, because they affected, it was the palace dancers um, of the great sultanates of Solo and Jogja that first struck Europe as extraordinary, beautiful, slow and otherworldly and wonderful. The other thing would have been coffee. That was a very famous thing. The Arabica that is now produced in Indonesia is some of the finest coffee in the world. And then third would have been Krakatoa the great volcano, just a little bit closer to Java than it is to Sumatra, in the Sunda Straits dividing the two. Now Krakatoa was a very significant volcano for the whole world because of the 52, 53 active volcanoes in Java. This is the one that blew up, circulated with a power wave seven times around the world, which meant that the end of its tidal wave actually lapped up the English Channel, although it was only three feet tall. In Connecticut in America, the skies were so red that the fire brigade called out um, lots of fire engines because they thought that the trees were on fire nearby. 120,000 people in the immediate vicinity were immediately killed. You had a tidal wave 30 feet high. And of course, this affected the weather patterns of the whole world. And when weather patterns are affected, so too are political systems affected. It has nine UNESCO sites in Indonesia. Four of them are in Java. You have Prambanan, 
you have Borobudur, you have Ujum Kulong, and then you have the fourth one, which is the Solo River area, where they discovered the remains of Java Man, 1.7 million years old, uh, an immediate, not Homo sapiens like us, but an immediate previous pre-human ancestor. And that too made a massive effect on the psyche of the rest of the world because it was discovered in the late 1800s shortly after Charles Darwin had brought in this theory of natural selection suggesting that we were probably all in a process of change and that we are really monkeys with a thin veneer of human skin on us. And these Java man later became known as Homo erectus are one of the earlier forms of pre-humans that is found throughout Southeast Asia. Java was also the seat of the independence movement and uh, it was also the seat of most of the learning because a lot of the people who were associated with the Dutch during the 350 year uh, interregnum colonial occupation by the Dutch were sent back to Holland and educated in the ways of the rest of the world and came back to Indonesia and realized well why are we under the thumb of the Dutch we are our own people so in a way independence and independence movements spring from education and I don't need mean to disparage any of the rest of Indonesia but I think one can say that Java is generally the most educated, the most international of the islands of the nation. Java is the 13th largest island in the world and it has some other fascinating aspects from a foreigner's point of view and that is particularly its mysticism and magic. The two sultans of the many sultans and kings throughout Indonesia, only two of them and that was the Sultan of Solo and of Jogja. The Sultan of Solo is still believed to be married to the goddess of the South Seas, uh, Loro Ratu Kidul, a powerful entity in the unconscious of the Javanese and indeed of the rest of Indonesia under a different name. And there is a special tower in the palace of Solo where once a year it is believed that the Sultan has an affair with the goddess of the South Seas and depending on how successful that night is life will go well for the fishermen who are earning their living in the waters and for the farmers who are earning their living on the land beneath the great volcanoes. So this union is a symbolic representation of the connectivity between volcanoes and land and the ocean itself. So Java is an old-time maritime nation and it has numerous fishermen and numerous seamen of all sorts of different types and different boats spread throughout this extraordinarily large island. The north coast of Sumatra is part of the sea that was dried up during the last ice age 13,000 years ago. So it is only 200 feet deep. But on the southern coast, the domain of the great goddess Loro Kidul, it goes down to 11 and 14 and 15,000 feet to great depths where creatures still live that we know very little about. The powerful side of mysticism, I shall just tell you one small story of my own because for many years my brother and I were traveling around Indonesia trying to find mystics and shaman and wise people who claimed to have special powers. Now we came across quite a lot of them. We came across a lot of charlatans, tricksters, people who pretended to be wise men with special powers. But we also came across a few of the real thing. Now of those few real people, very few of them were prepared to appear on camera and be filmed. But one was, and this is a man who didn't want us to give his name out or his address out, 
partly, mainly, because he was a healer to President Suharto and was regularly flown up to heal him from East Java. And this man had practiced, he told us, a type of Qigong, a Chinese medicine. Well, he used it as medicine. It's really a power awareness that can be also used as a martial or fighting art, or it can be used to heal people. That's what he used it for. And he said that you can practice this Qigong and distinguish the difference between the yin and yang energy running through your body. When you can do that, you can pool or store this energy in certain chakras, and then you can project it. And he showed us lighting newspapers, he showed us pulling things, he showed us pushing things, and for many months we followed him around on his journeys of healing throughout Java, and we acted as a grounders, I say, that we, my brother and myself, this fellow, we called him Dynamo Jack because we weren't allowed to tell people his real name, he would touch his patients or not even quite touch them, and they would move around as if moved by some energy, so powerful that he needed grounders to hold the feet of this patient. And if you held the feet of the patient, you could feel this energy going through you too. We did all sorts of experiments. Later we brought over a scientific group from America with testing equipment to see if he was tricking us, in which case it would have been embarrassing because he would have been tricking President Suharto as well. But no, they couldn't find what it was. And he says, of course you can't find what it is. It's chi. It's something that you have to learn from the inside. It's nothing you can understand mechanically from the outside. And this is a man who had great success in healing his patients for many years, asked for no money in return. He was just given gifts. So indeed you find in this modern island of Java still people who know how to practice the ancient techniques of healing and wisdom, which in this day of a changing planet are probably more valuable than they've ever been. Go and visit Java. It is beautiful, astonishing and powerful.